Hello, hello. <laughs> Welcome to Conversations with Bell, a platform that encourages personal growth and development by discussing real life issues in a meaningful way. Today, we have Alicia Cutting here with us to discuss the myth of the superwoman. Welcome, Alicia. Thank you so much. I appreciate the opportunity <laughs> to come on your show. I'm excited to have you here, and I'm actually looking forward to hearing um, your perspective. Well, yeah, Superwoman. Um, <laughs> it's a really like multi layered. Where to start? It's like so multi layered. Anytime you say, okay, I believe that words, they obviously mean different things to different people. Yes. So you say any word, it's charged. We automatically bring to it our own perspective on what that word means. Right. So I can only speak for me and what that means to me mm -hmm. and encourage everyone else to just think about what that word means to them. Right. Uh, yeah. So I, first and foremost, I'm a child of the seventies. So I think superwoman, <laughs> I like wonder woman, superwoman, you know, the superheroes right. <laughs> like that we had right. back in the day, but I'm not a little kid anymore. And I'm a whole grown woman with like life experience and yeah, a lot of living. So yeah. to me now, superwoman is not necessarily mm -hmm. a good word. Right. I just like to think that I'm a woman who is trying to just live out my purpose and right. kind of leave it at that. It kind of puts a lot of other expectations on it when we say super, mm -hmm. any superlative, like, you know, when I'm in high school, like best dresser, like you can be a nice dresser without being the best dresser. Right. You know, you can be a great woman without having to feel the pressure of being a super woman. Like, what the heck does that even mean? I don't know. Right. Right. I don't know. There, seem, there seems to be this idea anyway, uh, at least to me, that women, and more specifically Black women, um, enjoy being all things to all people all the time. Um, to push that further, <laughs> and if I'm like a thousand percent honest, it seems like that's the expectation for us. It's the expectation. Yeah, yeah. And um, I don't know, have you ever felt pressured to do it all? Well, with okay, a I'm smile <laughs> with style and grace, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so taking it back to what you said, that mm -hmm. we like the idea of being all things to all people. I really feel like that is, uh, um, it's something that has happened as a result of. I don't feel like we are automatically wired as human beings to yeah. try to be overextended, overreaching, to try to end all, be all see everything else running and juggling 8,000 balls in one time and thinking, hey, I just can't wait to get up and do this. I, I'm going to push back on that. I don't think that that's the case. I think that it's become uh, a learned behavior out mm -hmm. of necessity, out of mm -hmm. survival sometimes, out of, we know that if you have children, if you have a family, if you have a career, if you have all these other roles that you play as a human being, mm -hmm. You know, if, if you're trying to do justice to your children, to your family, to your spouse, to your uh, employer, to your career, your family, you're going to try to do their best. But the feeling like I have to do perfect things for everybody at all times, I don't think that that's natural. I don't think it's normal, but I think that we do it because we just don't want to let our children fail. We don't want to have our relationships fail. So yeah. it's like, you know what? Big girl panties on. Do what you got to do. And that's where it is. That's that's kind of what it has become. Yeah. I think the external pressure is real. And I think the internal is the, the learned behaviors you feeding into. OK, society's telling me I need to do all these things and be wonderful at all these things and excel at all these things. Um, and so if I'm not doing all these things, somehow I am deficient. As really? a woman, you know, I'm yeah. I'm not hitting the mark. So now I have to somehow fill these shoes. Mm -hmm. And um, I think a lot of people, myself included, it took yeah. me a while to unpack that and to understand that I don't have to hit all the marks every single day. I mean, even Jesus no. took a day off, you know, the God, yeah, God took a day off. So, I, you know, I cannot, absolutely. I cannot do that. Absolutely so, not. Um, I think when you're, I think there has to be balance. And I, I think that, you know, again, you have the external pressure and the internal pressure. And if the internal pressure 
isn't righted, you know, if you don't correct your thinking, I think you'll collapse under the weight of the expectations of everybody. And sometimes, um, you know, it's people that you that really love and care for you. They don't even realize um, that they're putting that pressure on you to be a superwoman. Yeah. Piling and you're you're like, yes, it. more please, more please. Yes. I like that. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So about that. So anyone who I feel like is over what 45 years old, you might remember this commercial. She can bring home the bacon. Anjali. Fry it over the pan. Anjali. Yes, ma'am. Anjali. So I think that is during my formative years. Yep. Really, if I'm honest, I can still remember the song. Mm -hmm. That takes me to a whole other conversation about media, about marketing, about yeah. the use of imagery, yeah. language, and how we are programmed mm -hmm. to do it behave in certain ways but yeah she's like oh i can bring home the bacon i can do it i can do it all yada yada bing bang and i'll be good and look cute all the time right. yeah well going right. back to what you were just saying the external pressures again if you have an employer or if you're self-employed you want to mm -hmm. do your best yeah. if you have a family you want to make sure that you're taking care of their emotional their physical their spiritual all of those needs you want to get yourself in the equation somewhere so yeah. to me the balance of it all goes to what has become kind of a catchy catchphrase but self-care yeah. so yes like many people i've had to realize and pull back and say where am i in the equation right what is alicia time what does that mean is it am i sacrificing the kids or am I sacrificing the this or the that to pull back and take a little bit of time for me? That's real. And that I think is where a lot of people, a lot of women in particular, have to really dig deep and have a realistic conversation with themselves. Yeah. Because I will say this all the time. Self-care is not selfish. Right. It's not selfish. But, we but have we're this. taught. We're taught oh. that it is. You know, oh, you're we're unfit. Taught that. <laughs> if you're not grinding, look, if you're not grinding mm -hmm. all the time, mm -hmm. if you don't have snap back right after baby within four months, seven months, nine months having a baby, if your snap back isn't tight, you know, we're, we're, we're programmed that everything has to be perfect. Like the model, model, model mm -hmm. person, the model woman is juggling living life on all eight cylinders, like yeah. the V8 commercials yeah. from back in the day, living life on yeah. all eight cylinders. Yeah, But to be healthy and to be sane, mm -hmm. and this is even in a pre-COVID life, yeah. pre-pandemic life, you have to make some decisions about what balance means to you. Mm -hmm. And I'm not just saying that because I'm a Libra, but it really, really, <laughs> really is so important to me. Yeah. And the reality is I've had to, you know, people say to me a lot. Alicia, you do a lot of different things. Like, mm -hmm. when do you rest? Guess what? Your girl takes a nap pretty much every day. I don't play about that because right. to me, I have to. If I don't yeah. recharge my phone, my phone's going to die. I'm not trying to die. Mm -hmm. Jesus, you know, we look at <laughs> uh, the Bible. Okay, look at Genesis. Seven, you know, the creation and then God rest. God didn't rest because God said, oh, I need to take a break and I need to chill and rest. That was an example for us mm -hmm. to say, you have to take time out to rest. Like yeah. you said, Jesus was doing this, healing folks, doing this, pouring out, pouring out, pouring out, pouring out. Jesus was like, I'm about to go take a nap. Y'all are not <laughs> going to know where I am. Jesus disappeared back. Yeah. It's the whole pour. do that? But how yeah. do we do that in real life? In yeah. real life, that's a little easier said sometimes than done. Yeah. It's the whole pouring. Um, you can't pour yeah. from an empty cup yeah. idea, you know. And and I remember watching Iyanla a while ago when she said, look, <clears throat> what's in the cup is for me. It's mine. Mm -hmm. The overflow is for you. And so I never forgot that. And I'm trying to live my life in that way. You know, mm -hmm. what's in the cup is for me. The mm. overage, the spillage, what's in the little saucer, that's for everybody else. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll and, tell you, I'll and, tell you. and I don't feel guilty about it. I really, that's really the don't. Thing too. Yeah, I don't feel that's guilty about it. Mm -hmm. That's the thing. I fly a lot. I've always flown a lot ever since I was a child. I've been on airplanes. Mm -hmm. And I almost have the speech 
to memory. Mm -hmm. Put on your own mask yep. before First. assisting others. And it was like, that seems so counterintuitive. Like, what are you talking about? How mm -hmm. am I supposed to take care of this person next to me who's incapable of taking care of themselves if I'm not taking care of them first. And it was like, okay, reality check, not, not Alicia, you will not survive to be able to help someone, anyone be a blessed to be a blessing, do anything positive in your life. If you're not taking care of yourself, mind, body, spirit, finances, all of the above, it's not mm -hmm. going to happen. So, mm -hmm. That's kind of where it recently in the past, I'd say the past 10 years or so, mm -hmm. really nailed into me. Yeah. You have to take care of yourself. Now, what that means for different people is different things. And being honest with yourself. Do I need to go on an extravagant trip every other week? I'm not in that position to do that. So that's mm -hmm. not going to happen. But can I make sure that I put the phone down? Can I make sure that I... Okay, let me let me readjust the schedules because I'm tired. I need to take mm -hmm. a nap. I'll be at work and late, but I need to take a nap. My mm -hmm. body is like, if you don't take care of me now, you won't mm -hmm. be around to right. leave a legacy or right. to do anything. Right. And if you want to talk about health disparities within Black women, especially we have issues, we have the disproportionate amount of maternal deaths. Mm -hmm. We have a disproportionate amount of other health issues. If we're not taking care of ourselves, then we won't really be there. And yeah. that's not acceptable for me. That's right, when I got serious about it. That's the, stress, when I got serious. the stress of it all creates nope. all these other problems. And you're right. You're no good to anybody if you're no nope. longer living. Not so you want to make sure that you're still here. <laughs> not only that you're not dead. Yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. I'm gonna be one. It's not even just that you're not dead, mm -hmm. but that you are not in a psychological space yeah. To be able to take one more thing. I also mm. remember back in the day, there was a, a like a little cartoon. You saw them see it in offices. Mm -hmm. Said, I have one last nerve and you're getting out. Something like yeah. that. Mm -hmm. But it shows mm -hmm. someone who was so frazzled yeah. that they were literally on the verge of flipping the heck out. So it's not just that you won't be alive, but the quality of your life will be so um, damaging Mm -hmm. to yourself that you can't even reciprocate love. You could be so irritated and annoyed and overstressed and overwhelmed and overburdened that a yeah. little kid comes to you with something that is so inconsequential and you rail out at the kid, flip out on them. And now they're scarred. Right. <laughs> like, what did I do? I just asked for a bandaid. You know, it's just it's yeah. too much. It's yeah. too much. And the yeah. long-term organ damage that stress gives to us is 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 so it's it's ridiculous let's talk about the stress for a second i'm glad you mentioned yeah. that right because ah. i feel like um at at some point in my life i i had become accustomed to a certain level of stress not all stress is bad um but 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 when you have so many different responsibilities, um, even if you're married, like you can be married and still be single. That can you know be what more. I mean? Because <laughs> yeah, that, you can have more. <laughs> yeah. So um, I had gotten so accustomed to this functioning at this high level of stress that it had begun to impact my my actual mm -hmm. health, my mm -hmm. my mental health, my physical health, my weight. Um, mm -hmm. you can develop all sorts of things behind the increased stress, the mm -hmm. elevated blood pressure or hypertension, mm -hmm. strokes, it, heart it, attacks, kidney damage, <laughs> ulcers. Yeah. Yeah. Depression, anxiety. Exactly. Skin, skin, skin breaking <laughs> out. The I'm an emotional addictive. eater, you know, so my weight mm -hmm. would fluctuate. It's, you know, it's still fluctuating, but you know, I'm working okay, out. Well, that's another, that's another show. <laughs> that's another show. But, I, you know, I'm an emotional eater. So when I'm stressed, mm -hmm. I'm snacking. You know, I'm not necessarily eating a T-bone steak every night, you know, <laughs> loaded potatoes, but I am a snacker. I'll go in and out of the, you know, I'm a snacker. Um, mm -hmm. you're, you have a decreased libido, you know, no that interest at all. Too you yeah. know, in sex or anything like that. You have GI issues. So mm -hmm. it's a real, real thing. And so we have got to, as women, um, put ourselves first 
on that, that whole list of responsibilities, oftentimes it's, you know, it's home. If there's a husband or a partner in the home, they're next. Then the kids, then work, then church, then sorority, then this, 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 this and you're way, you're at the very bottom. Listen, I'm a to-do right? list kind of person. Yeah. I'm a to-do list kind of person. Yeah. So when I realize that, okay, I have this, 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 this on my daily to-do list. Some things are mm -hmm. kind of smaller things. Some things were larger things because me, I know me, I like to have the satisfaction emotionally of checking <laughs> of things checking off. off. Like, <laughs> listen, sidebar, if I have to write down, take out the trash, just so I can have something else across <laughs> off. Yeah, I, I do that. Yeah. So yeah. my point is, I realize that I have like my daily to-do list. Mm -hmm. I might have like long-term, short-term goals. But I realized that I would always say, oh, I don't have to put that on the list, meaning something to do with myself, because mm -hmm. I already know that. But I realized, yeah, no, I need to write down mm -hmm. cardio. I need to write down, yeah. you know, take a nap. I need, I need to, well, I don't need, I don't need to write on take a nap because I'll do it. <laughs> <laughs> but I need to write these things down because it's a psychological effect yeah. of me saying you are equally important into this yes. equation. And when I was working in corporate environments and or even an educational system, I realized that, yeah, I didn't really take sick days. Granted, yeah. I was very blessed and fortunate that I did not really get sick. But I remember clearly, and I'm going somewhere with this. I remember clearly I had a tooth pulled. Mm -hmm. I was working as an educator, mm -hmm. had a tooth pulled that morning. My behind went to work <laughs> that afternoon. Like, what the heck? <laughs> Because I was like, oh my gosh, I don't want to, you know, to, to have the kids get off track or whatever. So I realized that's completely idiotic. Mm -hmm. We have self-care days and i.e. health health days, sick days yeah. uh, for a reason. And if you were to keel over and the stress of everything else, be it whatever your employer situation, employee situation is, mm -hmm. and you keel over, mm -hmm or are incapacitated because you're in the hospital for dehydration, you're not remembered to drink water, all these mm -hmm. different issues, your job will be placed on Indeed before you get good <laughs> in any rounds. I said, <laughs> you know what? Yeah. It's not our job to carry the weight of corporate America. It's not our job to carry the weight of capitalism. Unfortunately, yeah. let's be real though. We are having to, as women, particularly as Black women, statistically have to juggle a lot more. Yeah. That is a reality. We, 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 that's the current situation in the state. But how do we manage that is kind of where, where the struggle lies. Mm -hmm. And it might mean little things, little life adjustments that can, so, that can seem so inconsequential at the time, mm -hmm. but they add up in the big picture. I'm not a really TV binge watcher type of person, but if I'm looking at time as a contract and I got 24 of these hours in a day and I'm saying I don't have time to go take my kids on a walk or go to the park or do whatever, but I'm binge watching and the next show rolls into the next mm -hmm. one, I realize now it's been three and a half hours or right. I'm going to go down a rabbit hole of I just go to do this and then all of a sudden I'm three and a half hours deep. Yeah. It's not that it's an issue that I personally did not have the time. Mm -hmm. I have to be honest and self-adjust and say, where am I using my time? And prioritize. And prioritize. You know? Yeah, and prioritize. And that, and, made, mm -hmm. and that made change. So, mm -hmm. I, you know, I, I, I'm not going to say that it's, you know, that you can, I may get pushed back on this. I'm not going to say that it's I always have to put myself first. Mm -hmm. But I always have to be in the equation. There are times that I feel like life is about triaging a situation. Yeah. If I'm in a situation and I might want to say, oh, I need to go take a nap because Alicia, you know, I, I hit that. Oh, I don't know, naps can feel good right now. I can get my recharge to finish the rest of my day slash night. Mm -hmm. But there's a situation I have to be on the call with with a child or to be on the call with a parent or there's something that kind of preempts that. It's not that I don't find myself important. Mm -hmm. My mindset is I'm on the list, but right now I got to adjust that list. Life is fluid in that way, yeah. but it's not that I feel like I'm always first, but I reached a point where I'm always, oh, I'm going to be on that list. I'm in the top I'm three. <laughs> I'm, oh, I'm, I'm in the top three. I'm sorry. <laughs> because yeah, but yeah, because there's nothing that's going to yeah. be more important 
than me being healthy so that mm-hmm. I can do this, so I can do this, so I can handle this. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I, it might not always be number one in that very moment, mm-hmm. but definitely, oh, mm-mm, I learned that one. Maybe something that happens when you hit 40, you realize a lot of things and it's like, yeah. hmm. Yeah. Yeah. No. Kind of like I'm, I'm, a- I'm important too. You know, it's great I, to, you know, know, I think, I think when you become, I see it as a singer. I remember being a single woman with no children. And then I had a child first. Okay. So when I had my child, my child became everything. Mm. He was, and, and they all are wonderful of and course. important and beautiful. And I'm, <laughs> they're always on my mind. And every decision that I make, I'm including them in my decision. But I became like, tried to be this super mom, this super mm-hmm. mom person. Mm-hmm. And at some point, I had to talk to myself and say, well, where do you fit in in all where this? Do you fit right? in? He's important. He's important. I'm going to make sure he's good every mm-hmm. single day. Um, mm-hmm. But you're, but I was neglecting myself. Mm-hmm. And so I think that a lot of women fall into the trap of neglecting themselves for home, which, mm-hmm. you know, like you said, you have to triage and some days I'm last on the list or I'm not on the list today, but I'm going to make sure tomorrow that I do these things for myself. But I think, and so we think we're going to get a certificate or something. Somebody's going to come knock on the door and say, Hey, here's your certificate for the day because um, you put your kids first. And I, and I just think that there has to be balance. There has to be um, you putting you first Mm. Or at least I say in the top three. I, yeah. For me, it's I'm going to be in the top three every day unless there's yeah, something okay. tragic that's just happened. Um, but I had to get there. But I, you know, I'm saying all that to say I was single. I had I had a, had my my first son. Then I got married, and then my husband, um, and the marriage, and the and the house, and you know, then we had more kids, and all that mm-hmm. became mm-hmm. more important than me. Yeah. And I just got farther and farther and farther yep. down on that list till I wasn't on it. You can and feel so that's not good. Almost yeah, yeah, yeah. unrecognizable. Yeah. Like am I even like would the world end if I wasn't here or like what's <laughs> it's it's an extra pressure too yeah. to feel like well if I don't do this then it's yeah. not gonna happen. Okay, fall back. I'm talking yeah. to Alicia now. Alicia had these uncomfortable yeah. conversations with herself and said, mm-hmm. you know what? The world is not going to end. If Mm -hmm. Alicia does not do X, Y, Z at this exact second, get over yourself. (laughs) But my heart, see my heart, our hearts, I believe, are in the right place to say we want to give and we want to be right. We want to do right by our people, do right by the situation. We want to do right by the world, do right by Mm -hmm. God. We want to do right. Mm -hmm. But the point where you feel like life, the world will not turn without you running yourself on a freaking hamster Mm -hmm. wheel. That's a no for me. And when I was an educator, this is when it kind of really hit me hard. And this is kind of where that life forced me to kind of take a look back. I would come in after being up early, being a full-time educator Mm -hmm. who is passionate about teaching, passionate about making sure that all children are learning at their level, differentiated learning, pouring out, you know, pouring, 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 pouring. And I would get home and I would tell my children who are now just seeing, you know, now they're getting home. Everybody's home now. It's like snack time, homework time. I said, listen, mommy loves you. I love you so much. Four children now, four Mm -hmm. children, basically two years apart or 18 months and two years apart. Mommy loves you so much, but I cannot be the mom that you need me to be until I need 30 minutes. Mm -hmm. Go do something for 30 minutes and then I'll be the best mom possible. I think when I had that conversation with myself, it was Mm -hmm. like pretty much really, really real. And I said, I could have been like, oh my gosh, I got to get in here. And okay, you sit down at home, you take a snack. Like, look, the world's not going to end in 30 minutes. Mm -hmm. Okay. They're not going to even notice. (laughs) And you can't like function and yeah. it's like I'm, I'm 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 trying to fry something over here and mm-hmm. something's going wrong with it it's just a chaotic and i don't like mm-hmm. chaos either yeah so it's like no no the world is not going to end mm-hmm. if you take 15 minutes 20 whatever the case is if you triage the situation and include yourself in it the mm-hmm. world is not going to end i promise right. you 
And it was a healthy lesson, I think, for my kids too. Because we got to remember, if you're a parent or you're a caregiver or you're dealing with other human beings who are looking at you Mm -hmm. as a role model or as someone to learn from, we all learn from each other. So if Mm -hmm. we're learning behaviors that say, I must be on our own. Okay, uh, I'm I'm a robot. (laughs) I'm in the hands of it. I can't even get off. Oh my gosh. We're teaching people to be robotic and not live. Yeah. And that's not healthy for our kids either because we got to give them a life that says, yes, you have responsibilities, yeah, but your responsibility is to live yeah, and to breathe. And, you know, as I'm listening to you speak, I'm thinking, you know, we always hear you treat, you teach people how to treat you. Mm-hmm. That extends to children, oh, you know, in mm-hmm. a family. And so I've carved out space for myself. You know, we're in a good place now. My kids, the, 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 the I have an adult son and the the young ones are in high school and about to start graduating. Boom, boom, boom. And so I'm, I'm feeling good, but, but honey, it wasn't always like that. And there were days when I, I I just, it was a blur. Like, I don't even know how I got from one year to the next because it was so heavy was Mm -hmm. so much responsibility. Um, and I I was too tired to cry (laughs) and it, it, you know, it was just, it was just heavy. And so I would wager that I w- I'm not the only mother who ever felt like that. I'm not the only woman who felt so inundated with responsibility that I didn't mm-hmm. know. I mean, there was a period when, you know, anybody who knows me knows I like, I like a beat, I like a hair, I like, a, you know, all of that. But there was a period I went through, I just didn't care. You know, I'm sure if I bumped into somebody that I knew, they would be <laughs> like, um, you good, sis? Going on, something's going on with her, you know. <laughs> But I just I went through a period and now I think looking back, I'm like, I think I was de- probably depressed, Absolutely. you know, but I just you didn't no care. I, did, I just showed up how I showed up mm-hmm. <laughs> and, and you just had to, you know, you just had to adjust. But that mm-hmm. just out of character for me. And so um, I think it is so I, what I was trying to say was that I, I have carved out space in my life and in my home and with my boys who are young men now, you know, they understand me time. They understand space. They understand, you know, when I, when I come home and I'm in the garage and I just, I'm just sitting, listening to music for an, Girl, an extra five to 10 minutes, you know, they give me that. They get, they'll peek and they'll like wave and they'll go back in and then I'll finish my song and my sing off in the car, you know, boom, I'm ready to take my my worker hat off and now I'm I'm mom. So Mm -hmm. you just, but you have to teach people that you love and who you are in relationship with how to treat you. You have to erect high, tight boundaries and and boundaries, that's my word, because I didn't have any. Uh-huh. You know, I just kind of let people bleed all over me and I accepted it because it was the family member or someone I loved or was in love with or married to. And I just kind of put up, I had no boundaries. Uh-huh. And so it was no reason, it's no, no wonder that I felt like I was going crazy because I didn't have boundaries. But once, Absolutely. once I got them, honey, once I got them in place. <laughs> right. Right. And to be honest with you, you know, I mean, not not not. I'm gonna lie anyway, but but to but to speak to that, mm-hmm. you can't teach someone. Yeah, hear me well. You mm-hmm. cannot teach someone, anyone, no matter what the relationship is, as you have not. If you have not learned how you treat yourself, yeah. So I want that to really be a takeaway. You right. can't. We are always oh, teach people how to treat you. You teach people how to treat you. You should, okay. That's true. Mm-hmm. But have you learned how to treat you? Yeah. Because if we are automatically with verbal, nonverbal communication, we're informing people how, what we feel about ourselves. Yep. And that's not to be rude. That's not to be disrespectful. That's not to be obnoxious or mm-hmm. extra bodacious about it. Mm-hmm. But if I have not had the, uh, the adequate conversations with myself, mm-hmm. the real deal conversations, self-reflection mm-hmm. yet, I'm clueless. And what I end up doing is I'm just telling, I'm just regurgitating what society says Mm because I haven't internalized it for myself. So I don't believe that there's a one size fits all kind of situation to anything, be it self-care or whatever. There's one person's self-care is not my self-care. But when it comes down to learning how we balance our relationship with others, Mm -hmm. it first comes with how do we balance our relationship with ourselves? And I can't balance my relationship with myself 
in how I view myself, how I interact with myself, how I prioritize myself, what goals I set, what markers I personally want to achieve until I've done the dirty work of being very reflective and said, okay, Alicia, for real, for real. You can't even be in relationship and tell other people how to treat you when you don't know how to treat you or you're treating yourself in a way that is destructive. If yeah. it is, um, uh, which got uh, emotional eating, mm -hmm. if it is prioritizing exercise last, if it is not taking time out to enjoy the things that you want to do, if mm -hmm. it's meaning that I have not been honest about my flaws and it, it, it might mean, I tell people all the time, take an honest inventory, mm -hmm. like put your face in the mirror hard and look at it really, really good and say, where are the issues that I keep sweeping under the rug? Okay. So once you kind of deal with those issues, like I know mine was perfectionism. That's not a good trait mm -hmm. because that led into this pairing of procrastination and perfectionism. They were like yeah. joint like this. <laughs> That's not good. It affects yeah. everything in life. So because I am a recovering procrastinating perfectionist, okay, I realized that I wasn't putting things on my to-do list because I didn't want to not hit it. Yeah. So I wasn't even holding myself accountable yeah. To say, Alicia, put that time for yourself in the equation. Mm -hmm. So I'm just spinning my wheels without being reflective and saying, what do I need to do for me? How yeah. do, what does it look like for me to take care of myself so that someone else can look at me and be like, oh, that's how I need to reflect responsibility in shared spaces with her. Mm -hmm. A lot of us haven't done that. And it's right. uncomfortable. But you can't. Yeah. You can't move forward, I think, in any area or aspect of life until you've had these for real conversations with yourself, like dig in with the part. OK, and I'm not saying to do this, to be like, you suck. You're a liar. <laughs> <laughs> You're a jerk. You're so rude. You have this I'm not <sighs> saying like with that being the end all be all. This is not a pile dirty on yourself and make yourself feel like a jerk. That's not what I'm saying. Yeah. But you have to lay it all out. You're, you're, okay. You're in medical profession. No one's going to go get an x-ray or any kind of imaging MRI. You're not going to do that when you're fully clothed. It's like they have to, yeah. you have to get naked. Get you have to take that off, sir. Get so <laughs> get naked. Deal with these issues yeah. and re be realistic and say, okay, I need to work on this. I need to be aware about this because mm -hmm. if my goal is to try to be all, like you said earlier, I'm going to try to be all this, be here, be there, be everywhere for everybody else you might find that that's rooted in your need for acceptance. Mm -hmm. You won't know that until you get real with yourself and yeah. then you can address it. I don't need to be doing this, that, and everywhere for free people who I know don't even care for me and would not even care if I didn't do it. I'm doing it for acceptance. But hey, what, wait a second. I don't need to do that for acceptance anymore. Mm -hmm. And your life all of a sudden begins to take shape and be more balanced. Yeah. Yeah. It's about getting real. Yeah, it, it's it's funny, not funny, but um uh -huh. I guess funny, but uh, you know how what happened to you in your childhood mm. whether it, um expressed or implied, um how you allow those you carry those things into adulthood. Yep. And you know, it's so interesting, you know, people who know me personally um know that I'm, you know, I'm going to say what's on my mind, right? Mm. I wasn't always that way. Mm -hmm. I was uh, reared to be, you know, you speak when you're spoken to. Seen and not heard. You don't have an opinion. My opinion is your opinion. And I said, mm -hmm. you're going to do X, Y, and Z. Mm -hmm. um, and that's what it is. So for a very long time in my life, um, I didn't know what I really thought or what mm -hmm. I really wanted or what was really important for me. And so... I think probably around the time I graduated high school and went off to college is when I started thinking about like, hey, that's not even really important to me. Okay. That's what someone else has told me is supposed to be important to me. Mm -hmm. And once that um, I broke the chain of speaking up, Amen. I returned home a different a different person. Mm -hmm. And, you know, where I come from, you're disrespectful if you mm -hmm. have an opinion um, that is <laughs> that contradicts with what, what the elders in your family and in your circle 
you know, say. So I, I caught that a lot as I was going through college. But um, I'm sitting here and I'm thinking about how I had struggled with boundaries. But I think parents need to, especially women, you need to pay attention to how you're parenting because you yep. teach children when you don't allow them to have boundaries, when you don't allow them to speak up and say how they feel, you teach them that they don't matter. What they feel and what they think doesn't matter. And so I carry that and then really start to unpack that till I was 19, 20, 21, somewhere in there. I started but at least realizing you did. that. Yeah, yeah. And it <laughs> once the water turned on, it, you know, I'm like on steroids now with it. But it, you know, and so I'm <laughs> I'm gonna say what I think. I'm gonna say it. And and I really don't care. You know, of course you get yeah, over the years I've learned to be sweeter and you get more tactful. You, you can be tactful, and, you know, yeah. polite and you know, but I'm gonna say it and mm -hmm. um and be done with it. And you know, and, not any week. <laughs> yeah, and, and sometimes it doesn't have to be tactful or nice and sweet. Sometimes and sometimes it's, really it's not. Yep, and no, sometimes, sometimes it's not, not about but I have I found my voice. And mm -hmm. over the years, you know, and it's it's just interesting when I talk to other women who were like, you know, we're I'm in the 50 club now. And so yep. speaking of women that are 50 and up and they still don't have their voices like they're afraid to speak up and say this. is Well, I'm, my family's telling me, you know, I want to do this. I should do this. And my husband is telling me that I should do that. But that's not what I want to do. And they're afraid to speak up. And I just think that's so unfortunate. You know, I don't want to say sad and I, I don't want to cause problems in people's marriages, you know, do what oh, works for y'all. But oh. it's just interesting when I have those conversations with women who are in my age group, who are still struggling with, with their voice. And I have to think, you know, they probably had a similar childhood where their voices weren't like, I didn't have a voice growing up. And I'm not saying, you know, my folks put tape across my mouth and told me I couldn't, but when I did speak up, I was punished. So I learned from that, even though they didn't say to me, your opinion doesn't matter. I learned to keep quiet, you know, and to not speak up and to not advocate for myself. And so I had to unpack that and um, learn how to advocate for myself. So I don't need anybody to speak up for me. I'm not that I'm not that girl. I'm going to be talking, you know, speaking up for other people. So I just think it's just really, really important that we pay attention to that and that we find our voices and figure out a way, even if, if your voice is shaking, you know, Still say, speak it, speak it, speak say it, it represent it, say it. And like you, it. so many of us mm -hmm. have had various levels of childhood trauma, mm -hmm. various levels of we are informed verbally, physically or mm -hmm. nonverbal communication how to minimize and shrink yeah. down ourselves, but at the same time, how we are responsible for everything else and everybody. Mm -hmm. And so I'm going to speak on myself for a quick second. Mm -hmm. I am a firstborn. Mm -hmm. That may carry a little bit of some, some kind mm -hmm. of it does. baggage. baggage <laughs> okay. It does. I, I, apparently it does. Um, not only am I a, a firstborn but I, I'm, I'm a communicator. Mm -hmm. I always have been. I was that little kid who found her way not to be rude, disrespectful, or precocious. But I was a problem solver with communication. And I saw, you all are saying this, but you're saying this, but you're really saying the same thing in a mm -hmm. different way. Mm -hmm. So I'm over here trying to analyze and bring folks together through communication, yeah. which sometimes I found out was inappropriate as a child. <laughs> So I learned that lesson to kind of, uh. but yeah. like you said, taking the time when you were hitting 19 or so to clarify and find your voice, find out what's acceptable to you. What are things that you can respectfully push back on mm -hmm. to make sure that your life has the value to it. That is not just someone else's life. Someone else living vicariously through you. And I'm taking this beyond you're being a child or beyond us being children, mm -hmm. but to now our adulting, if we don't know who we are and aren't honest with ourselves and really dig deep mm -hmm. and analyze why do we do what we do when we fall into these patterns, is it about acceptance? Is it about you want people to like you? Is it about your perfectionist? Is it about your 
you know, your need for approval, or if I don't get approval, or is it your need for all of these things that cause you to act out behaviors or to accept behaviors and not set up boundaries where you're uncomfortable? You got to take the time to do that. Because once you find your voice, you realize that you don't have to wear a label of a superwoman. You can be you. And my another takeaway I want for us to get is that you are as individualized as a snowflake, as a fingerprint, as a unique creation that you are even fraternal or uh, even fraternal twins yes. or identical twins have distinct purposes, goals, and person. They have differences. Yeah. So you don't have to try to live vicariously, have someone who live vicariously through you and putting labels and putting pressures on you mm -hmm. if that's not really part of your purpose that you found for yourself. So I want us to dig deep and to identify some of the purposes that we have in life. Because then once we do that, we can weed off anything that's not a part of that mm -hmm. and take that pressure off us and to understand that you are created, you know, to, to have your own life and purpose. But again, that purpose will not be manifested properly if you have all these overwhelm, you know, you're just all over the place and yeah. not focused yeah. and not healthy. Yeah. It's not going to happen. And yeah. I said, that's, that's the reason why. My self care might look different than other people's self care, right. but I said no, 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 no. I'm going to have to try to. Does this part is this thing part of my overall goal for what I feel like my life purpose is? Mm -hmm. If it's not, I will politely say I'm not able to do this at that time, and take that pressure off of me to be able to let someone know I'm sorry I'm not able to do this at this time, and be okay with it. Right. You know, and each right. stage of life, each phase of life is a little bit different. So you mm -hmm. can't get into the rut that every single stage is going to look exactly the same. No, it's not. It's not. I promise you, I'm, I'm not as as much of an elder as some of my elders <laughs> that I look up to. But I can tell you right now, no, there are yeah. ebbs and flows and different stages of life mm -hmm. that look different and they look different for everybody. Yeah. Personally, you're individual. Right. Absolutely, Irene. No is a complete sense. I was I gonna think, say that too. Yeah, I think I was thinking it when you were talking. I'm like, no it. is an answer. <laughs> now, and, and you I, don't have I'm to explain it. To explain I'm a communicator, it. so I might mm -hmm. choose to qualify that. No, but watch this. Here's mm -hmm. a here's a perfect case in point. I I even I I, I write a lot. Mm -hmm. I like to write for a living and I and I, I write. So even in something as simple as a text communication, when I'm asked a direct question, now I've decided, I've learned, it's been a process, but I learned how to answer the question first. And then if I choose to give an explanation, that seems so inconsequential. That mm -hmm. seems like such a minor thing. For me, it was major. Because mm -hmm. once I realized that someone asked me a question, I said, um, no, I'm not going to be able to do that. I have to be out of town, da, 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 da. but I've answered the question first. Whether mm -hmm. I choose to give an explanation or not, I've answered the question. So for me, that was empowering because I dug deep and I said, at least you have an issue with, you know, kind of like talking all over here, all over there, and not answering mm -hmm. the question. You know, let's be real. Yeah. I'm all over the place, but we, I we've been perfect. conditioned to people, please, you know, and Absolutely. you don't want to be perceived as rude or, um, you know, disrespectful. No. And so all that, all that, um, programming, you know, I feel like we we're programmed and women are socialized differently we are and we're, we're supposed to go along to get along. And if you on. rock the boat too much left or right, you're a problem. And yes. I think that does women a disservice because honestly, it sets you up. If I'm not allowed to have boundaries yes. and to speak up as a young girl, when I become a teenage girl and I enter into romantic relationships, guess what? I'm going to carry that um, mm -hmm. maladaptive behavior into that relationship, into a marriage. And, mm -hmm. and I may put up with things, right. Mm -hmm. That I should not, because I never learned to say no. I never and learned to say to children, that's not okay. Yeah. Yeah. Future generations. And then are wash, rinse, at repeat. Yeah. 
Wash, rinse, it repeat. Back around. Yeah. It keeps coming back around. So you have to be, you, know? you have to and be really, really careful. Yeah. So let, let's um let's talk about some definitions because I know we're throwing yes. the word superwoman out there. So I looked yeah. it up, and I wanted I know what okay. I think a superwoman is. Okay. And so some of the definitions that I came across were uh, a woman who is successful at everything. <laughs> a woman who is very exactly a woman who is very successful in her job is involved in many activities and also usually takes care of a home and family. A woman who is successful in her job and also takes care of her children and home. A woman who has greater strength, ability, intelligence, etc., than other women. Okay. A woman with exceptional strength or ability, especially one who successfully manages a home, brings up children, and has a full-time job. May I, may I, may I, may I, do you have some more definitions on that one? Is that, <laughs> no, is that, that was the last okay, one. Okay. okay. <laughs> that was I enough. Noticed, After I saw that, I was like, okay. Yeah, yeah, that was enough. What I noticed mm -hmm. is a common thread on your mm -hmm. definitions that I'm just now hearing is mm -hmm. that they all have these boxes. Mm -hmm. A woman who is successful on her job, in her mm -hmm. home, in her family. Okay, well, that, mm -hmm. first of all, being individuals, mm -hmm. not everybody is going to have those same boxes at right. the same time. Some people don't have a job. So does that mean they're not a superwoman because they don't have a job? Mm -hmm. Or some people don't have children or they don't you know, have other relationships. So does that mean that they're not successful? Mm -hmm. Also, uh, you said something about someone who is stronger than others it's like where does this qualifying like this he woman I, I, you know, you know. I, it's not the like superwoman olympics here okay and that you're and then i think one of the first ones that you said correct me if i'm wrong i think one of the first ones that you said was talking about um she you know she excels in all things at the same she's time she's successful in everything first of all okay 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 two things two things i'm, I'm going to try my best to summarize this two things successful in everything First of all, what is your definition of success? Mm -hmm. Everybody's definition of success is individualized. And right. I will always push back when somebody says that someone's not successful or I'm not successful. To me, successful does not necessarily mean everybody knows my name. I'm cool, but that's not the case. I don't want everybody right. to know who I live and what I'm doing. So to me, success means I am living out my purpose that I right. feel good about whether I get paid financially for it or not, I know I'm making an impact in life. That's my definition of success. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, but the idea, this is again, that programming, because if all those definitions that you came up with <laughs> or that were, that were written, but not by somebody else said that she's successful. My man, probably the man probably wrote those. She's successful in all things. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I have done a lot of different things. Mm -hmm. I wear, I joke around over this hair, I wear many hats. Mm -hmm. People who know me in real life will sometimes say, Alicia, what the heck don't you do? <laughs> I do a lot of things and I've done a lot of things concurrently mm -hmm. where sometimes it was kind of a blur to me. And I feel like my goal was to do all things well because I do believe if I'm going to do anything, I want to be excellent in it. I want to give my best or not do it at all. Right. Okay. But to say that I was you know, radioing and writing and raising children and being, ma you know, married and doing this and all these things at the same time. And everything was like all at the same time. Perfect. That's a lie. Yeah. That's an absolute lie because I, I might've been, you know, performing, but I wasn't performing every single day and teaching every single day and being on radio every single day because that's impossible. Yeah, it's impossible. It's, it's literally impossible. So I don't like those definitions. I would prefer, if we're gonna use a positive spin on the word superwoman, mm -hmm. to say a woman who is done the self-diagnosis, mm -hmm. dug deep, realized who she is, the positive attributes, the attributes that she needs to work on, unpack, and the traumas or the different programming that she's walked away with and grown up in, she's mm -hmm. deconstructed that and said, okay, this is who I really am. Now I can look at where do I really, really want to make an impact in the world yeah. and then be able to honestly go through life, being able to make decisions. Does this over here align with who I am and my core values and my purpose and my direction in life. If it doesn't, then now I have enough voice to say, 
I appreciate the opportunity. However, that's not where I am right now. Thank you. And be yeah. on and go. Yeah. We and have to give ourselves permission. Yeah. yeah. But women have to give themselves permission to decide. And I think that we struggle with that collectively. You know, society mm -hmm. tells us you have to be college educated. College is not everything. Everybody's okay. not college material. It, that, that, that's not true. So you got to go to college. You got to get okay. an advanced degree. You got to get married. You have to have 2.5 kids and live in the gated community. And uh -huh. one of you drives the bins and the other, one, you know, and, and, and then before you know it, you're living someone else's life, you Rinse. know, or, or if you didn't meet that, or you're depressed, you know, with the curtains drawn because you didn't reach this, mm -hmm. Uh, ideal that many haven't, and and a lot of people don't want, you know. I don't and want so, it. yeah, yeah, that might not work for you. That yeah, might not work yeah. for me. You know, my yeah. life has changed. What I think is important has changed. What I needed at sixteen is different from what I needed at twenty-one. Is different from what I needed at twenty-five. Mm -hmm. Is different from mm -hmm. what I, you know, when I was thirty, thirty-five, forty. You know, now I'm fifty, and so I I expect that it'll change some more. And, and I have to give myself permission to say I, permission to be an individual and to think independently and to say thanks, but no thanks. That's mm -hmm. great for you. That's wonderful for y'all. But for me, this is what my. I'm going to do. <laughs> this is my lane. Yeah, this is my yeah. lane. And, and I'm content over here. And I think mm -hmm. so, so much time is spent grasping at images that we see on social media, which that's a whole nother layer it's to this superwoman falsehood. You know, you're seeing the glossy pictures and the 5,000 square foot home and she's, you know, the snatched and the baby's mm -hmm. only, you know, and you're trying to, you're chasing an idea and some people do it and do it well. And I'm not mad at anybody who does it or aspires to any of that, but it's not a one size fit all, you know, I happiness don't... looks different for every, you know, you can ask a hundred people, what is happiness for you? And you'll get a hundred different answers. Right. And or, so at the end of the or day, yeah. you could get everybody's pre-programmed answer. Yeah. And get a couple of people who are like, you know what, I'm a pushback kind of person. Yeah. And what I realized about myself, in my development over the course of years is that mm -hmm. even as a younger person, I didn't, I was not like, I don't want to do things just because other people want to do mm -hmm. it just because you think that, you know, that I'm, I have to do it a certain way. I'm going to, I don't want to do it a certain way just because, and you know, I, I want to be able to, to be who I am fully mm -hmm. without having to feel like that pressure. Mm -hmm. So again, take away ladies and whoever else, mm -hmm. Is, is listening and watching, we can do many different things. If you mm -hmm. are very talented and you're able and been blessed to enjoy doing many different things and be able to do many different things, that's beautiful. Mm -hmm. Don't feel pressure. You have to do them all at the exact same time. That's mm -hmm. one. And then two, you have to define your own success, your own individual right. joy and happiness. Not every single woman wants to have children and be mm -hmm. married. That has been a reality, I believe, right. since time <laughs> immemorial. But if that's not where you are and you're feeling the pressure at 35 years old, oh my gosh, I have to find somebody real quick so I can get married and have a baby. That's bondage. <laughs> that is bondage. And I believe that God from the beginning has been like, there are certain things that you just got to break free from yeah. and the expectations and other people will forever pile things on you. And this is what I know to be fact. Mm -hmm. No, hear me well. If you don't remember one thing that I have talked about this entire spiel, please remember this. No matter what you do, there will always be someone who does not approve. No matter what you do. You could be the most juicy, I like strawberries. You could be the most juicy, luscious strawberry yeah. and pick right in the top of the season mm -hmm. and be a strawberry. But there are people who don't like strawberries. Get the hell over it. Yeah. Be the best strawberry that you want to be for you. Not because other people have to stamp their approval on it. Because you're not mm -hmm. always going to get a gold star. You're not always going to get a stamp of approval. Some people, you know, you could give the most 
breathtaking speech in the world. Ask people who preach sermons and the congregation the group may be sitting there like, <laughs> that doesn't okay. mean that they didn't internalize it. <laughs> you know? hey, wrap, can you wrap this up? <laughs> exactly. <You're all. laughs> Just do you. Do you. <laughs> no labels. It's, um, I think that um, we can't really talk about the, the superwoman without touching on the strong black woman trope, like they're sisters in my mind, okay? And so I did a little research and um, I'm gonna quickly go through that. And it says, scholars define the strong black woman schema as an archetype of how the ideal black woman should act. There are three components. She has emotional restraint, she is independent and she is a caretaker. Girl. She has Girl. emotional restraint. She is independent and she is a care caretaker. And I think she might be an evolution from this uh, superwoman idea. You know, I blame Shaka Khan. You know, when she put that song out, Who I'm every woman, I'm every you know. <laughs> Mm -hmm. It's Shaka's fault that we bought into this idea <laughs> that we Shaka, can do. Shaka, Anjali. <laughs> <laughs> and then Living Alicia Keys comes silver. along, you know, Alicia Keys okay. comes along in like 20, 2007 with another Superwoman song. And I'm like, mm -hmm. can we stop with the Superwoman crap? Can we just but... be a woman in all of our <laughs> idiosyncrasies and all of our talents, techniques, and, and just be? Right. Why we gotta right. put a label on everything? Right. Especially right. as black women, because the historical background mm -hmm. on that is kind of really where the meat is to me. It's like, mm -hmm. okay, we know the stories. Mm -hmm. uh, the enslaved black women would be, you know, there in the field, pregnant, deliver a baby, have the baby, put the baby on the back and keep on picking cotton. Okay, mm -hmm. I don't know how historically accurate that actually was, but we're programmed mm -hmm. to believe that if she could just be out there on a cotton field, have a baby and keep picking cotton, what's, what's wrong with you? <laughs> what do you mean you need a nap? What do you mean you need a day to just decompress and to write or to do or to, to, to decompress and, and just live and breathe? What mm -hmm. are you talking about? That's mm -hmm. unhealthy. And again, that is rooted in the in the concept that I do believe comes from enslavement. I yeah, do believe sure. that it's like strong people. What does strong mean? I'm a big person who like about what is your definition? Okay, does strong mean that I realize I need to evaluate? I need help. Once I pulled back, looked at things honestly, I realized, yo, I need help. Mm -hmm. My overeating, my um, my overspending, my mm -hmm. this, my that is rooted in a place, and I don't know how to unpack it. I need some help. Yeah. I need a physical doctor to help me diagnose different disorders. I need an emotional doctor. I need some therapy to help me to work through this so I can be a healthier mind, body, spirit that I really can live my life. And we talk about, oh, I'm going to live my best life. Well, if you're carrying the trope of the strong black woman, mm -hmm. then you're taking the responsibilities that you're not supposed to be taking. Right. Balance is everything. We can't talk in one hand about the strong black woman carries everything. She's independent. She don't need a man. I can do better <laughs> by myself. And then at the same time, be mad when those definitions get put on us and we're having unhealthy relationships with others. Yeah. Make it make sense. It yeah. can't. So I'm about get rid of get rid of all the terms. Let you know, so and so, whatever your name is, woman, be who you are in the fullness of all who you are and work at being the best you that you can be. And that's not going to look the same as the definition of sister girl over here. And it's not supposed to, that's the point. It's not supposed to. A lot of people blame or, or men, I should say, and some women blame the feminist movement for this whole strong black woman superwoman thing, right? But I think it started much earlier. I mean, you know, the reality was our men were taken away from us, right? And so then women had to step into those roles that were, you know, formerly inhabited by our men. And so that kind of through, you know, generation to generation, it kind of morphed into, you know, what we're seeing today. And so I think the angry black woman ain't, you know, I don't need no man. I could that. I think that's an extreme. It I think most of us are in the middle 
trying to fill shoes that we were never designed to fill. If I'm a, and I was, a, I have been a single mother, so I, I can't, and, and I think I'm a great mother. I think I have great children, but I could never be their dad. Like mm -hmm. I, I can't, I could never be that. And so I think when you have women who kind of puff themselves up and they're like, well, I'm the mama and the dad, you know, not Why really. Listen, you're not really, the mom. You know. Mm -hmm. And a mom is going to do what she wants to do and feels she needs to do mm -hmm. for her children. That's independent of what a father may do. So if there is yeah. not a father in the house or in the life of the children, yeah. that's not saying that you're the dad, you're the mom and you're the mom who's going to raise and do the best job that a mother can do for her children. So when we go back to, yeah, from the, was it the feminist movement? I, I can't say that, mm -hmm. but I can tell you that since time immemorial, society and culture has been trying to put definitions on women that are taking the person out of who we are. Yeah. And we're meant to exist in community. So whether it is my village, if I don't, what, what, what if I don't have any children and I'm just exactly. a person who, or, or you don't have a spouse, you what know, if you don't have a spouse? What, yeah. if, what if your children are no longer, what, what if you, you know, what if you don't have an extended family around you? Mm -hmm. Community is meant to fill in and to yeah. be all of those things because no man is an island. No person mm -hmm. is an island entirely to ourselves. We are created to be in partnership to some degree of interdependency. Yeah. So yeah, from back in the day when the families were destroyed, intentionally split up to the every every cultural movement since then that in particular mm -hmm. in the black community has intentionally gone in to separate divide and conquer and here we are generations later with this trauma that some of us are now beginning to break out of and i appreciate that mm -hmm. to say listen i am who i am and you can be a partner with me we can partner together to make this world a better place but all of these tropes all of these like labels and everything else do get the labels off and live yeah be free. Labels are bondage. I'm just trying to tell you, I, in my opinion. They are. The other thing I wanted to make sure I pointed out before we go is that a lot of this whole superwoman, strong black woman um, trope narrative is in relation to women who are wives and who have children. But I wanted to point out that women who are single and who don't have children also experience that phenomenon. Right. Mm -hmm. And yep. employers, family members, um, organizations, church, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. they lay claim to a lot of the resources and whether it's time or money of those single childless women. And so it is important for you if you are a single childless woman, you still have to set boundaries. You still have to be careful. Um, I can remember I don't really do church anymore but when i did i can remember they would often say if if you're if you're if you're married your first ministry is your house if you have children you take care of your children if you don't have a spouse and you don't have children then the church <laughs> is where you need to be and i'm like sir ma'am all of my time i need to be up in the church house with you i have a problem with that others may not what I'm what I'm trying to say that is still that. goes back to external pressures and it, balance. Exactly. And they you know and, and they lay claim the to those resources. You know, if the you remember assumption. yeah that you don't have time like it, employers no. do it too. They assume that they someone do. who who doesn't have children now has more time to give to the workplace. Right? But can I add this too? Yeah. The reality is that employers organizations just mm -hmm. because someone a Jew on the outward perceive oh they got plenty of free time you're <laughs> judging them based on your interpretation of what you would do if you right. were childless if you were spouseless and if you didn't have anything else to do but mm -hmm. you don't know their life you we all again i go back to we are all individuals with individual lives paths and identities and just because someone is childless or they might not have you know any any one that they directly are responsible for you don't know what their other interests are and they might be right. in that sandwich generation and they're taking care of their elders or, they, or they're right. volunteering which gives them joy and gives them life maybe they're working on a side career in an artistic realm you don't know what they're doing so right. get out their life and stop putting labels <laughs> on them just because 
and they're asking them for they're money <laughs> and yeah, asking folks for money. You know what I mean? Like, I think, I think about soul food. The, remember the movie soul food and yes. how Terry, Terry was the one who had gotten out and she, you know, she couldn't maintain a successful personal relationship, but she had mm -hmm. money and mm -hmm. every financial, uh, situation that came Terry up in that family, money. we're going to, Terry's going to do it. And that's so unfair. And, and I know that that happens in real life. I've seen it. Yeah, I've seen it too. You know, I've it's seen it. It's, it's not fair. It's not healthy. It's not fair. <laughs> it's mm -hmm. not fair. It's not healthy. And it's very presumptive. Uh, it's none of those things. Yeah, very much so. Very and disrespectful. It's very judgmental, actually. It's disrespectful. Yeah. It's very judgmental. <laughs> you don't know. You don't know where someone's financial obligations are. They might feel like paying off everybody's college educations, but you're trying mm -hmm. to nickel and dime them for something. You don't know where their money is tied up or what they're planning on doing. That so was just, even in a. I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, no, that's it. It made me think of that. Made what you just said it made me think about um, good times. There was an episode. Remember, they had a rich uncle or a rich cousin or something. And they were like, well, we'll just ask, let's say his name was Joe. I don't remember what his name yeah, was. I don't remember. Uh, we're going to ask yeah. cousin Joe. <laughs> mm -hmm. We need money to do something. They always need yeah. money. But in this particular, they were in a mm -hmm. bind and mm -hmm. they had this wealthy cousin that everybody borrowed money from. Well, he came over, they set him up and they're like, by the way, we need <laughs> X number of dollars for this, that, and the third. And the man had lost his job. And his wife didn't even know. And so I just think, you know, we need to be kinder and we need to stay out of people's pockets and stay mm -hmm. out of there, you know, mm -hmm. stop laying claim to their time and assuming that because they assuming. always have. Yeah. And because assuming that because they always have, they're always going to give. They don't owe you that. They don't owe you that. And I yeah. would just challenge women to stop feeling like you owe people those things. You don't owe them those things. Mm -hmm. You know, you I owe say you no. nothing technically, but to love you. Right. <laughs> and right. That reflects in different ways. <laughs> so let's so let's talk about some solutions. Okay. We want yes. to end on a solution oriented note here. Um, what are some ways that the overwhelmed woman? No, no, no. I'm sorry. How do we take care of ourselves? How do we take care of ourselves? If we find, if we figure out that we're the overwhelmed woman. And we're in a situation where we're up to our eyeballs and responsibilities. What are some of the ways that we can deconstruct that and get to a safe space? What are some of the things that we can do right now today? You know, we know therapy. You can go get some therapy, um, whatever your faith is, lean into that. Um, I, I'm a big, I say take vacations. If you can't do that for whatever reason, do a staycation. If you can't do a staycation, you know, do some hours, see if there's someone who can watch the kids for you for a few hours for you to go sit in the park or sit at a, a, visit a lake or mm -hmm. go hike a trail or something, exercise, work out, pay attention to what you're eating and, and what you're consuming visually. Also, it's not just the media um, diet yeah, is your just as diet. crucial and right. important right. as right. your the physical diet. Don't isolate. Yeah. You know, we have a tendency well, to well, isolate well, ourselves. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, when things are yeah, going I mean, bad. So there, 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 is, there, is, there is healthy isolation, mm -hmm. meaning meaning there's time when you need to pull back. Because I will always use Jesus as an example. Mm -hmm. Jesus was pouring out healing, doing this, da, 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 da. and we'd be like, where is Jesus? Jesus off in the lake. <laughs> Jesus off over here by himself. Nobody knows where Jesus was. Jesus self-isolated for a purpose. Yeah. So I'm not saying you, you go down a rabbit hole and you're all of a sudden in the, in the depths of your depression. That's a different kind of isolation. We're not talking about that. So as far as like real tangible steps, I will always go back to, it's time to write a list, baby. It's time to write mm -hmm. a list. It's time to, because you can't, I found that the, the, the times when I was most stressed, mm -hmm. like legit stressed, like bored, like I probably was in depression, but most stressed and depressed was when it seemed like everything was just like, oh my gosh, I got to do this. Oh my, oh my gosh. And this and this and all these pressures are floating around in the atmosphere. And it wasn't until I put pen to paper, will work for me, and wrote it down, I was able to identify, okay, well, yeah, um, this is, mm, okay, this isn't really as crazy. It's, it's a lot. But it wasn't as like doomsday as I thought that it felt like at the time. Right. So 
it for me meant I'm writing down to-do lists and not just the do list, oh, to do this, do this, do this. But I put my life into little chunks. I said, here are my goals. I broke it down. I said, I want to be able to build X, Y, Z. I, I got to do this to make some money. I got to do this. And I put them in chunks. And so I kind of, this, this, this might be a 20 minute chunk that I put into mm -hmm. my business this day, you know, every day. And this is chunk over here that I apply to self-care or that I apply to personal care. And I might need to reorganize those things throughout the day because every day is my days or not every single day is the same day. Right. Okay. But if I know that I'm hitting this block of time I'm putting into building this mm -hmm. and I've hit this, then I feel better. And it's less, it feels less overwhelming once I bring some structure to it. So I would encourage everyone to identify and really define those things that are your obligations, that are your things that you're committed to and realize, are there some of those things that are not urgent? They may be important, but they're not urgent. So is my participation in a, in a, in a, in a group meeting or meeting for yeah. this organization important? Yes. Urgent? No. no. I'm going to have to say, Hey, you know what? I can't dedicate three hours of my day to this today because I really need to get taken care of this that I didn't. That ownership mm -hmm. of claiming your time to, to take reclaiming my time reclaim my time doing yeah. that <laughs> is very empowering so it's like once yeah. you make that step it begins to feel like oh okay this felt a little different today gives mm -hmm. you the energy to keep it moving in another way okay but learning how to another thing is practicing setting boundaries mm -hmm. practicing being able to say I'm not able to do that right now. Now, I will take this to myself. I'm the only example that I can look at. I like to do a lot of different things and I'm very thankful that I'm able to do, you know, a lot of those things that I do, I can do it well. So people will ask me to do certain things and I, in my heart, oh, oh, oh my gosh, I'd love to, I'd love to, I'd love to, I'd love to. And then I have to be honest, but do I love, would I love to, why, why do I want to do that? Like, I know I'm complaining in one breath. I got so much to do. I got to go. But I'm saying, oh, I would love to. Well, why? Be honest, Alicia. Well, is it because you just FOMO? You don't want to miss out on anything? <laughs> you want to be able to do it? It's like, oh, my gosh, I'd love to do it. Yeah. But mm, be honest mm -hmm. and say, you know what? As much as I appreciate and would love to, I can't. I'm not able to do that the way I would want to do it to my and be OK with that. So yeah. it can be helpful to right now, like today, invest the time and take a little bit of time and look at your life and organize it into, in, into uh, chunks mm -hmm. and be able to say, OK, as long as I am working these chunks, what is it that I can do to reorganize my life to be able to breathe? Because if you're not breathing then you're not living. Yeah. And that goes to sometimes we don't even realize that we're not physically even deeply breathing. When we are stressed, we're not even taking in oxygen the way that mm -hmm. we need to. We're not even exercising our lung capacity and deep breathing. That affects everything. Mm -hmm. And if you run yourself ragged, I promise you, just I, I look, real talk, I just have to ask myself, is this going to run me ragged or can it really wait? And I realize a lot of things that people put on you as urgent, really not. Some of them really aren't. And it, it'll be okay if I get to it tomorrow. And if it's a problem, then I'll be like, I'll have to take it up for, you know, I'm just, I'm sorry, but mm -hmm. I, I could not get to it today and be yeah. okay with that. Cause yeah. once you feel, once you feel like, just like when you were 19, you realize you never could look back. Mm -hmm. Once you realize that the world and external pressures will vampire suck your ass, suck you dry. <laughs> they will suck you dry. Matter of fact, Stevie Wonder said, and loves the needle love today. He said, the 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 evil plan, evil plans to make you its possession. Life's pressures and other people's pressures and this, that, and what other pressures that have nothing to do with you, your purpose, or your destiny will literally try to suck you dry. Mm -hmm. You have to decide you are important enough that you do not need to be sucked dry. You will not co-sign your life being sucked dry out of you. Because I'm going to tell you right now, 
at my age right now, I refuse to die unfulfilled. I refuse to die with stress and baggage and other people's expectations being on me. And that has to take courage. And it has to take you feeling like your purpose is so in line. I believe in my creator. I believe that my purpose is so in line with the creator that everything else is going to have to pass away and fall away. I'm going to do what it takes to be in line with my purpose. And I'm not going to die or be sucked sucked out, vacuumed out, my spirit <laughs> vacuumed out by, by other people's expectations and pressures. Yeah. not going to happen. That takes courage. But I had to get to the fact where this little shy girl who mm-hmm. held and it like like the one in four, I had been you know sexually abused and had mm-hmm. other pressures and things that were placed on me as a child. I said, you know what? That girl is looking at this woman like, girl, you do you. And I'm good with that. Mm-hmm. So I encourage all of us to address, address your trauma, address those issues that you kind of sweep under the rug and your busyness of life you never really accept and address the Mm -hmm. freedom from the bondage is a whole nother level and it makes joy in your life and joy in choosing you are so valuable to me that I'm going to pour out into you because I'm pouring from a place where my cup is full and I Mm -hmm. feel good in my life and that reflects more so than someone, there's nothing worse than someone who was stressed and da 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 da. And here I'm pouring out for you. Be like, girl, if it's like that, you can keep it. I don't, I don't want you pouring out into me right. that. with that spirit, <laughs> with that nasty spirit. Nasty yeah. you, you, there's yeah. no love in that. There's no love yeah. in that. You know, and my my life's mantra right now is go where the love is. And that's what I do. I, I, I go where I am celebrated and not, not where I'm tolerated. If I, if I try to fit in over here and you're treating me like you would rather I not be there, I'm gone okay. before you have a chance to blink. And I don't, okay. and I don't apologize for that. And so I think that it's so important for women, for us to find our tribes. Sometimes you don't come from the best family uh, situation, you don't means. have siblings, whatever. Maybe mm-hmm. you don't have a mom like Cliff, Cliff and uh, Claire Huxtable. I didn't, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. um, but they did the best that they could with the knowledge that they had. And I love them both dearly. However, if I needed a certain kind of, um, uh, uh, what's the word? I'm yes. <laughs> Affirmation. There were some, there were some things that, that they weren't able to provide mm-hmm. to me. And so I had to figure out um, where I could go to get those things because there's still needs. And so I Absolutely. would just encourage you to find your tribe. If you're, if, and, and a lot of us don't live in the same cities mm-hmm. as our parents and families. And so you have to find your tribe wherever you are. And mm-hmm. you're, you can make your family. You, you can make Absolutely. your family unit into whatever you need it to be. And, and Girl, there's no shame yes. in that. Yeah. Not- and so if you're married and you're having this issue, I say have a conversation with your mm-hmm. spouse and let them know what you need. Right. That's part mm-hmm. of the whole marriage agreement. Is it not right? We're supporting each other and I'm trying to give you what you need and you're trying to give me what I need. And every day that's the goal. And so this There's should be a safe prostitute. space. Yeah. Mm-hmm. There should, this should be a safe space for me to say to you, honey, this is what I need. I'm this is what love it. looks like to me. This is what mm-hmm. I need to feel and see from you mm-hmm. for me to be happy in this in this marriage. And they should mm-hmm. have an ear to hear and a heart to understand that. I believe. I now, believe it too. You know, I that's what I believe. But um, what's next for you? Where can where can we find you on social media, Alicia? Well, I well. am at um ALC mm-hmm. Media Inc. on yeah. YouTube mm-hmm. and ALC Media on Instagram, mm-hmm. ALC Media on Facebook, or Alicia Cutting also. Mm-hmm. And um, okay, Twitter. I'm, I'm I'm on Twitter, but honestly, Twitter is more <laughs> kind of like my my my, my randomness space. <laughs> but that's Alicia Cutting as well. Social so, media is yeah that's a whole nother animal it so really, we can find really you is. Yeah. the pressures it's like you know what sometimes it's easy to kind of fall into that trap because mm-hmm. even i've had to deal with the fact that like when i've gotten unfriended before <laughs> at one point in time it was like or blocked oh, I, don't, I, don't, I don't care less i don't listen i i don't even know if i've ever been blocked 
But um, I, you know, like if, if you're being unfriended and yeah. it's like you like your friend, it's like, for me, it, even like something as small like that, it was like, oh, like did I pop up on your time? My analytical self was like, yeah. oh, do I pop up on your timeline too much? <laughs> like, did you not like? I'm like somebody. I thought they were like we were friends connected, and then I go back and be like, oh, we're not friends anymore. It's like, but you know what? Me and right now was like my perspective again. Mm-hmm. I had to self analyze on something even small like that. Say, Alicia, what is the deal? Like, why would you even have a second thought? If somebody unfriended you, yeah. is it like a self-affirmation thing? <laughs> I realized that my analytical brain is like more curious, not upset, yeah. more curious. It's like, what was the reasoning? What but then I, I realized, mean, yeah. but then I realized that just makes space for like for someone else. New people, yeah. new people that I've met along the way that I was not able to connect with as far as like I'll say Facebook friends or whatever, because yeah. the Facebook has a limit. So look, I'm saying taking ownership of the little things in your head that pop up yeah. and yeah. addressing them, it gives you such freedom and liberation. I'm yeah. feeling like I can't wait to be like that 75 year old woman. That's just like, <laughs> like, Hey, this is me. You know, yeah. I can be a strawberry. You don't like strawberries. <laughs> it's okay. I'm good. I'm too much yeah. for you. Not enough for others, but I'm good for me. So Yeah. And then, you know, we also have to remember that everybody's going through something and somebody's, um, you know, everything isn't about you. You know oh. what I mean? Everything is we we, we have a, this habit of making everything about us. So if someone so unfriends true. you or they block you or they're not returning phone calls, well, you know, you're making it about you. Sometimes people are going oh, wow. through things that require that mm-hmm. self isolation, you know mm-hmm. what I mean. That's what I love so much about my close friends because they know I disappear. Um, mm-hmm. I'm around if, if it's an emergency. I'm go- you know you know how to get me. But sometimes I just have to take a break, a Go step back, back and recalibrate. Yeah. And you know that's family, friends, whomever, except my kids. You know everybody but them. <laughs> but mm-hmm. you can you can always you know we just need to stop making things about us all the time. A lot of times it is not even about you. It isn't. It isn't. And it's unfair for you to put that on to um, yeah. the other person. So a lot of times. And then you're putting an expectation mm-hmm. on someone else and you don't want an expectation put on, on you. Yourself. Make it make sense, right? Make it make sense. <laughs> Hypocrisy of it all. <laughs> balance, balance, balance. Basically, in, in summary, just live in a way mm-hmm. that honors who you are the core mm-hmm. of who you are mm-hmm. if i'm a communicator the the common thread through my life is going to be there's always been something about communication and teaching always mm-hmm. so whether it looks like this when i'm 8 to 15 or 13 and whatever it looks like when i'm 62 or beyond mm-hmm. it's going to look a little bit different and that's okay no extra pressure and stress on the situation. Walk in your authenticity that you have dug deep and analyzed. Like, honestly, dig deep and address it. Get some assistance if you need to unpack it. But you mm-hmm. can't go forward and teach people how to respect you or how not to put and use you as a dumping ground. Mm-hmm. Like you're some kind of like garbage pile. Yeah. And with no respect or regard. If you learn to accept and reflect who you are and what yeah. you will tolerate and know which is good if you, which is good for you in your life. Yeah. In my opinion, it just makes life a lot smoother. And since I started doing that, little stuff does not even halfway annoy me like it used to. Some stuff is yeah. like like a, it's like you're, you're, that's annoying, but it's not causing me deep, deep stress where I'm like, oh my God, I'm questioning my life right now. Cause I've yeah. been there too, too yeah. much, never again. Never and you live again. and you learn and you hope as you age, you gain wisdom and experience and you're able to impart that into people you love and on platforms like this and yours um, and, and to your children so that they can have, you know, maybe they can avoid some of the, yes. you know, the, the mess ups, you know, Let's that you have, yeah. Cycle. Yeah, stop, stop the cycle. The, sure, sure. Stop sure. the cycle. Sure. Life is. We have people, and this is. I, I have to say this before we before we close out. Mm-hmm. I will often, usually, either hashtag something because I love 
because I'm random hashtags, but mm -hmm. life lessons or lessons learned or life is precious. So mm -hmm. I don't like to say life is short because mm -hmm. that's kind of putting a qualitative thing on what is short, what is long, but right. life is precious. It is. And I can tell you time after time after time, people who I know who are friends of mine, mm -hmm. who all of a sudden the next day are no longer. I go back and I'm like, oh my God, I, we yeah. just had a Facebook interaction and they're literally gone. Mm -hmm. You don't know the time. You don't know your hour. You don't know when it's going to be your last breath or your last interaction. So honor yourself and recognize Always. that yeah, yeah, life is precious. Prioritize mm -hmm. yourself because God does. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. and just know that life is precious. Live it. Carpe diem. Mm -hmm. it's, not, it's not even seize the day, but it's like pluck the day. Make each day yeah. beautiful as if it were your last. You never know. Because eventually... Mm -hmm. It might be, but these other pressures and stuff. And if you have a bad day or a bad week or a bad month, there's always uh, tomorrow, yeah. right? There's a every day you open your eyes is an opportunity to reset mm -hmm. and do it reset. again. So it's not the end of the world if you if you had a, a crappy day or, or crappy, crappy week hour or a crappy <laughs> week. Find yeah. something though. Yeah. Still, we have all we all have them. All yeah. of us. Still, it's my practice. I mm -hmm. still will be like, you know what? It even with everything else that did go wrong, I saw a little kid who was happy and jumping rope. Mm -hmm. That gave me joy. I saw peace. I saw life. I saw beauty in the world. I mm -hmm. have to find that because if you don't, the world can be a horrible place. But there is beauty. There are little miracles that happen. And I challenge you that even when you're having a bad day or a bad week or week that's just been dramatic from top to bottom, yeah. Find something, find something and hold on to it for dear life. If it's going to keep you moving and positive, hold on to it, honor it, and just meditate on that. Just find beauty in that. And extend grace. I'm going to close. <laughs> like in church, I'm about to close. <laughs> and extend the grace to yourself that yes. we always extend to others. Give mm -hmm. yourself grace. Okay. Mm -hmm. You don't have to, Rome wasn't built in a day. You're not going to have it figured out in one day. This is a lifetime of moments and experiences where mm -hmm. you get to the point where you kind of sort of know what's going on. Give yourself grace. Yes. Give yourself grace. Please, ladies. Um, you can find me across all social media outlets. I am Belle Morgan. As always, um, thank you for tuning in to Conversations with Belle. I hope this helped one person. Um, please share it. Uh, on your platforms, on your pages, tell somebody about me, tell somebody about Alicia Cutting and, and all the great work that she's doing. Um, I look forward to talking to you real soon about real life issues in a meaningful way. Until then, have a great evening. <laughs>